so Hylion just provided us uh, closure for 2022. Um, I uh, purposely skipped last week uh, in anticipation of this. Um, wasn't sure uh, where my expectation lied with um, what we were going to hear on the call. Um, I was extremely pleased coming out of this call, closing down 2022, and I think we enter into 2023 with a sense of optimism, especially for the back half of 2023. There was so much that was jam-packed into this. And so our words, when they come through social media and cover what this company is doing, is uh, absolutely uh, during a time where the disconnect is very, very real. Um, and for those uh, investors out there that actually identify that very disconnect, um, the, the profits are going to be um, very, very real. Uh, and they are going to be insurmountable. And right now, it absolutely is in our best interest to cover what's going on. Uh, I'm going to run through the, um, the actual presentation here, discuss a few points um, as a, a part of a, a much larger uh, synopsis of what I thought um, when uh, what came out of the call uh, and actually closing down on what uh, 2022 actually meant for the company and the progress that's been made. And highly on this entire time has required um, an astute application in paying attention to detail. Um, you can make your broad swaths if you'd like. You can make your broad assumptions about this company. Um, I think that's a huge mistake. I think you have to pay attention to what they're communicating. And I found that their primary method of communication is through the earnings call and through presentations like this that come from uh, highlyon.com. Um, you can talk about commentary. You can you can refer to commentary like myself and, and many others out there on social media that are providing um, opinion-based uh, interpretation of the information that's released by Hylion. However, I encourage each and every one of you guys to derive your own opinion with regard to the opportunity that exists with Hylion Holdings. And that information comes from what I am declaring to you now straight off of the highlyon.com website under the investor tab they do a really good job of providing this. Um, the second best piece of information, in my opinion, um, is the quarterly calls and the clarity and the color that's uh, provided uh, during those specific calls. So that also is provided. Um, if you call yourself a highly on investor, you should be um, chomping at the bit to get a hold of that. Um, this one was uh, the best one I've heard so far, by far. And I picked up on a lot of things that I'm going to share. Uh, perhaps my interpretation was uh, perhaps maybe a little bit more jaded to the bullish side than some because I haven't heard some of the interpretations on some of the key points that were delivered, especially during the call um, that uh, I'm going to talk about. and Hopefully you can find some value in that. But uh, the full year uh, track hitting the commercialization milestones, um, uh, this has been a key um, in highly on walking through their uh, product validation and um, they have been adamant upon this we see in the landscape Tesla and Nikola both really failing on this front um, the subject subjecting their product to a marketplace that's putting rigor over that product and the product is failing um, we cannot have that um, there will be learnings no matter how much validation goes into it and highly on a strike trying to strike a balance of uh, pre-commercial uh, validation of their product uh, before it gets put into the rigor of um, the Class 8 space. And now this was discussed a little bit more uh, in detail with regard to how we are supposed to look at the White Glove program. And I thought that it was one of those things that uh, it, it um, required uh, a little bit more explanation. I'll go into that when I talk about it during my, my regular video. But um, this is really just a summary of the accomplishments completed first year revenue generation, right? Remember, 2021 was a pre-revenue year. Uh, 2020 year. 2022 was far from that. And for them to garner the hybrid sales the way that they have um, a, an increase uh, quarter over quarter of, of over 100% of revenue generation on the hybrid, I thought was phenomenal. Um, I was very, very, very surprised uh, to see them top the 1.1 million in generation that was supposed to be during their their good season, which does reflect the higher increase in the uh, hybrid EX sales uh, with the 1.1 million of, of revenues generated. 
Um, but um, nonetheless, um, those are the bottom line follow throughs that uh, I'm looking for uh, as an evaluator of the company in uh, looking toward the future and the progress that's being made right now. Fill the initial 210 slots for Hypertruck. And this just goes into paying attention to the detail. Um, this, to me, solidifies a deeper relationship with the OEM, that being uh, 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 PACAR uh, and Peterbilt. Uh, now, Freightliner is kind of the, 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 um, the mystery in the rough here with regard to um, them being very forward in going to market with the Peterbilt chassis. But there was one specific thing, of uh, extremely interesting nugget I just about fell off the couch when I heard it, with regard to the actual devoted line from the OEM that was actually devoted to um, the prospects of getting highly on closer to integrating to the OEM process. We'll talk about that during the long video as well um, when we get into those highlights that I was able to pull that I have to share with the audience because unfortunately, aside from a few really, really good content creators out there um, that have provided information, I, I've failed to, to hear those uh, interpretations of the information that I heard. Um, acquiring the Carno generator will always go down as being a, a key milestone in my mind in 2022 for the company. Um, Carno is going to fit into this equation uh, incredibly well. Um, there was a, a call uh, a, during the Q and A qu a question to suggest that if you're if you're partnering with Hyzon, which was one of the big key takeaways from the call, um, why do you need Carno? And Thomas Healy did a fantastic job of explaining that the Carno generator is absolutely going to pay dividends uh, down the line once that uh, once that iteration has been um, put to the test. Now that iteration of the Carno ERX is going to be showcased at the um, at the ACT Expo coming up here uh, in late June, which I thought was another just fantastic piece of news that was released. Uh, built out the leadership team and grew the workforce. This is something that I've always earmarked as being a huge positive for Hylion and their ability to grow the team. Uh, Jay Craig uh, added to the board um, in, um, in replacement of Mr. Ed Alcala, who was a founder uh, in the company who, who did pass away in late 2022. Um, that was also brought up on the call as well. Um, so Jay has stepped into that position uh, as appropriate. Uh, expanded the relationships with Cummins and Peterbilt. It doesn't get any more vague than that. But I would highly encourage you to take a detailed read on each of these um, uh, each of these tidbits of accomplishments because the, the the step in the direction and collaborating with some of these major players, I mean, these are heavy hitters in this place, is not to be uh, understated. And finally, the Hypertruck ERX powertrain included in the Inflation Reduction Act, the CARBS ACT mandate and the CARBS ACF mandate. There was a tidbit that was offered by Thomas Healy on this that I'm also going to talk about and expand upon in my long video with regard to the government's posture to extensions and uh, potential waivers from these proposals. And this was a key takeaway that nobody has talked about from the call. And this is why I put out my content, because I feel like I'm a subject matter expert on Hylion. And I listened to the conference remarks based on the due diligence that I've already done on the company. And this is an absolutely huge piece of information. And it's aligned with what I have expertise on with regard to rollout of new regulations uh, as they pertain to industry. And it is the same application, no matter what application it is, major systems, no matter what it is, as long as there is availability of the product, the government will not allow for extensions to be awarded and allow companies to continue to wag uh, their uh, intentions down the line and use the excuse that there's not a product that is available on the line. This forces the uh, consumers of these products to force out the avail uh, to shop out the available options in the marketplace, my friends. The Hypertruck ERX is that option, and I am calmly telling you this was a huge, huge takeaway from the call this time around. As we step into 2023 and 2024 over the next couple of years, it earmarks a transformational uh, focus getter on what Hylion brings to the table and what companies are going to be forced to have to look at. And they will not be acknowledging any type of extensions beyond the um, ACT, ACF, 
mandate dates um, and it forces companies to have to look at those available options now in the marketplace. No need to spend a whole lot of time with this for the highly on investors that have covered the company for a while. They've known since late 2021. This has been rolled out uh, and it has been doubled and tripled and quadrupled down on uh, by the uh, CEO, Thomas Ely, with regard to tracking the progress. Um, I can't dispute the um, uh, progress that's being made by the company um, and it has to be uh, uh, acknowledged that their own independent uh, determination of the milestones that are necessary for the company in progressing along their timeline um, has absolutely been met and I give them full credit for doing this. Um, whether or not it renders them to a better place in a way of um, generating uh, you know, revenue and, and sales and really making an impact is yet to be seen here. We're on the early stages of stepping into that in the next two um, the final check boxes in this are to expand the fleet trials, which should happen in the first half of this year. And then completing the uh, CARB, uh, NHTSA, and EPA certifications for over-the-road uh, commercial uh, transportation. That will be huge in taking us from a, a pre-commercial product to a post-commercial type of uh, eligibility uh, to start production and then final the uh, stage there where they're going to enter into the final uh, stages of production. Calm before the storm here as far as the order uh, backed. I think what it needs to be focused on is the deep size of these fleets. Um, these are preliminary orders. The question is, are they going to fill these 210, which I've declared in uh, above slides, that they're going to fill these orders with success, but um, what it could mean for the future in not only filling these orders, but having follow-on orders as well. But these are some incredibly big, uh, incredibly diverse fleets setting the stage and really setting the example for stepping into a relationship with Hylion and intermediate relationship, I might add, in the uh, step toward electrification of their fleets. And I think this is just a, uh, a solidification of the technology that Hylion is bringing to bear. I think this represents uh, a willingness of fleets to step into new technology, e even pre-commercial viability. And I think the stock market is disconnect disconnected and discounting um, the ability for Hylion to succeed with these fleets that are declared to you here, I think that's a big mistake. Um, and the exciting part about the stock market and companies like this that are early on in their inception is that we as uh, individuals, whether it be institutions or, or retail investors, um, I'm an independent investor, so I don't put myself in any category, have the ability to evaluate what we uh, calmly see an opportunity now and allow these opportunities to come to fruition. And I'll leave you with this thought. Is it safe to suggest that these 210 orders are going to be filled um, only to be uh, final uh, relationships with these companies? In other words, is it safe to suggest that these 210 orders uh, are going to be filled with zero expectation of follow-on orders from these fleets when we know that the ACT uh, uh, mandates and the uh, uh, Inflation Reduction Act mandates are coming on the line and to suggest that companies are just going to look otherwhere exclusively. Now, I think companies are going to look exclusively across the landscape, and I'm talking about the heavy hitters, um, Cummins, some of the larger companies that are offering um, natural gas solutions out there. But if you're suggesting to me that somehow these 210 orders are going to be purchased, filled with no uh, interest in a follow-on relationship with Hylion. Um, it takes more of an imagination in my mind to come to that determination than the one that I come to and that this is just start of the party. Um, they're going to fill these orders and they're going to work really hard to solidify their uh, existing relationships and not um, look to provide this as a, as a first order only to um, not have the opportunity um, to, to grow with these fleets uh, as the mandates become very, very real and the realization that these companies have to continue to augment their fleet 
with an electrified uh, low carbon type of solution uh, becomes more and more apparent in the marketplace. Very surprising to me that the certification takes this long. You can see the notation there by late 2023. That's what it is. Um, I don't typically have any type of uh, uh, sense of, of urgency with regard to the certification as long as it is inevitable. So as long as they're uh, able to achieve each of these categories under each of the um, federal mandates, then uh, I'm good with it. And this is something that is being uh, overlooked and, and quite frankly discounted by the market. I think that's uh, also one of many, many, many mistakes that are being applied to this company right now that's being uh, priced at liquidation value as if none of this is going to come to fruition. I think the disconnect is something that I have uh, constantly foot stomped, something that I feel like if you are looking to discredit uh, the fact that they are uh, eligible and they will absolutely apply for and be eligible for awarding of these credits that I'm declaring to you now, I think that's a huge mistake if you're somehow siding with the market in agreeing that Hyliana is somehow going to go out of business and not be around to uh, seek this inevitable certification that is declared here. I've been provided zero reason, zero reason as to why Hylion does not meet their CARB NHTSA certification uh, into the future, and I want to differentiate the very fact that I think the stock market now is continuing to presume that Hylion is a SPAC and will fail like most other SPACs out there have failed, and they will fail to meet any of these initiatives that, by my estimation, is 100% incorrect of an application to a company that will meet these certifications and will be eligible for these credits as declared here uh, on this slide. I will not talk too much about the Hyzon collaboration. Uh, I'm very bullish on the news. Um, unlike some who have provided some very useful constructive criticism, uh, the obvious being around the uh, practices of the company with regard to their SEC obligation, and we will see how their uh, trial uh, and their hearing uh, for extended stay on the uh, New York Stock Exchange actually uh, plays out here. Hylion knows um, not to partner with a company that's going to inevitably go out of business. Um, I don't think Hyzon goes bankrupt. I don't think any of those concerns are viable. What I would say is this, as it pertains to Hylion, this middle portion here, or excuse me, the latter portion to the right, the Hypertruck fuel cell iteration of the of the product, I couldn't be happier because this was the big question mark on my end on how they were going to go about uh, actually fortifying this uh, Hypertruck fuel cell iteration of the Hypertruck ERX. And there was more color added on where the specific application was going to pay dividends. And for me, it was in the 5.7 space, not the class 8 space. Um, this was a bridge in interpretation. It's my own. I would express uh, an interest in you doing your own due diligence in this, but there's one specific remark from Thomas Healy that allowed me to extrapolate a regional application, especially the Los Angeles area, where they ha are ahead of the curve in um, eliminating um, the ICE engine application and the importance of the opportunity that exists in the Los Angeles area and a place where the Hyzon is actually actively transporting as we speak um, with their zero emissions type of profile. Now, for you guys that are critical of this information, for me, it specifically meant um, their opportunity to go from low carbon to no carbon. And that it might not scientifically be the most justifiable move, but politically, it's absolutely in the uh, realm of fortifying their product line, especially their Hypertruck ERX product line, uh, along these three verticals. Um, and I thought that this was an absolute key takeaway from this closure of 2022 and something that you need to pay attention to going forward. So one thing I did not get out of this collaboration is how much capital is going to be put toward this project. That for me is the bottom line question. Um, you know, Hyzon uh, is in real trouble. 
Now, I have not looked at the financials in Hyzon, but uh, Hylion has plenty of capital uh, to execute along their timeline. And what they can't do is help companies that are struggling execute uh, uh, along theirs. Now, if this is mutually beneficial, I'm okay with it. Um, I have no reason to believe that it's not going to be mutually beneficial, so I'll start there as a baseline. But I will be critical on the amount of dollars that goes toward this uh, Hyzon collaboration and the existing R&D that needs to happen with the Carnot generator that's owned exclusively by Hylion. So um, interesting uh, development here. I looked at it like I thought that Hylion needed to shake things up. And this was absolutely that. I don't believe it was something that was short fuse. I believe that this was something that was in the makes for a long, long time. Um, and I do believe that it actually fortifies Hylion's ability to provide a very viable hydrogen fuel cell solution uh, to the marketplace. And I'm excited for the prospects of this collaboration. I thought the biggest piece uh, from the uh, financials was uh, John Panzer's uh, acknowledgement of the transformation phase from closing down the initial funding book and transitioning to um, more of a focus on garnering orders and uh, fortifying their ability to internally generate capital. I thought that was the biggest piece. Now, for me, you know, them hitting their full year guidance of two million, um, they came in just over that mark was was good. Um, you know, it is what it is. Um, it's not um, lighting the world on fire uh, by any means. Uh, the piece here where it talks about and funding other development activities caught my attention. Um, that's specific to what I feel like potentially might be uh, a little bit more augment from Hylion that I would be comfortable with in the collaboration with Hyzon. Uh, but certainly plenty of cash on the books here entering into 2023, 2024, uh, and beyond. It'll be really that impasse of the company's ability to garner orders uh, and really um, solidify this relationship on the onset on how they're going to drive top line revenue. Um, the profits and the margin compression will be very real on the onset. The question will be um, when those margins are able to be um, expanded upon and actually uh, earmarked as a fundamental metric that we can forecast into future earnings. Um, that's going to be the key here. And it's not going to be at a time where we're generating a bottom line profit, guys. Um, it's going to be some time before that. I think the stock is showing some real strength here um, at the $3 range. Uh, it's been a while since we've dipped down to the lows, and I think we've seen the lows. I don't think we revisit that, not with this quarter and year closure of 2023 and not with the amount of optimism that we have stepping into 2023 and 2024. It just it cannot happen. Um, it can. I'd be surprised to see it do. Uh, I have cash earmarked. Uh, to step up my current position, but I'm not buying the stock right here. Um, I'm sitting on my position and I'm happy. The, the, the share base is already accumulated and it has been for many, many months, uh, if not years. And I'm happy to uh, track the progress going forward as it pertains to the actual stock ownership in this company. You're going to have to pay attention to the evolution of this company on your own, okay? Don't expect that the company's going to come out and start to light the world on fire with speculation and conjecture. They don't do that. Um, they've kept their nose clean uh, very, uh, very well over the last three years in public markets, and I, can, I believe that they'll continue to do that. Um, showcasing the Carno here at the ACT Expo is going to be cool to see. Um, with their fo uh, focus on innovation and collaboration, they've got all kinds of work uh, to do there. They've got all kinds of strategic, big, big monster projects um, to actually focus on, as well as the investor conference that was mentioned uh, there the end of June. So um, that clo uh, really concludes uh, the slide remarks and my commentary over the summary in 2022. Um, this will be a little bit shorter of a video to kind of summarize my comments, and I'll be coming out with a follow-on long video um, to give a little bit more deep dive and color on, on some of the remarks that were made uh, during the call. So I uh, appreciate you guys and uh, enjoy the content.